My name is Chris Sassiella. I am the director of the Innovator Support Services Group here in the SEED office. SEED stands for the Small Business Education and Entrepreneurial Development Office here at NIH. We are very excited to have this time to talk with you today. Joining me today and people who will be doing much more informative talking than I are Todd Rubenstein, who is a project manager who leads the Company Showcase program here in the office. Uh, Dr. Ethel Rubin, who is one of our entrepreneurs in residence, and Mr. Luis Gutierrez, who is another one of our entrepreneurs in residence. Uh, Ethel and Luis are truly the brains of the operation. They're the people who are going to be giving you tons of tips and tricks. The reason that we have all gathered here today is because you are going to be going to Biotech Showcase. We want to make sure that you guys are really well prepared for that. So we've reserved an hour. We can take that long. We can end early. It's mostly up to you and how interactive you are. Next slide, please. Now that we have a fair number of folks here in the room, I just want to make sure that we are aware of a few housekeeping tips. First, this webinar is being recorded. Either you saw Todd turn the recording on or you saw that as you entered the room. Uh, the reason for that is for those people who are not able to attend today's session because this is just one hour out of your life um, we're going to make that recording and the slide deck available so uh, we're going to record it we'll post it onto our youtube channel and then you'll get that link sometime in the next probably 48 hours so if you miss anything you can always go back and review it you'll have the slides which have active links in them and uh, hopefully that will be a good head start for you the second thing is during the presentation itself, please submit your questions in the chat box or the Q and it's a chat box on Teams. And you'll I find that up at the top of my screen. It all depends how it presents on your screen, but there is a chat box. And so please do use that. Once the overall presentation is done, then it'll just be free flowing conversation and the con you, know, you can either type it in or ask your questions live and we're excited to be able to answer any and all questions you might have. So my final slide is, yay, you're going to Biotech Showcase. We're really excited. This is a different type of showcase event for SEED. Uh, SEED has only existed for about four years, and I am a learning sort of creature, so I keep trying to expand the services that we are able to provide and serve more and more of the NIH community. With most showcase events, we provide you with both a registration and a presentation slot. That is not something that we are able to coordinate with the organizers of Biotech Showcase. However, we are able to get you a ticket to the room. And that's a really, really valuable ticket for a really, really important week in the biotech investment space. And so what we are going to be doing over the next 44 minutes is I'm going to be quiet, turn off my camera and my microphone, and Todd, Luis, and Ethel are going to talk to you about how to make the most of that experience. Todd? Thank you, Chris. And as Chris said, my name is Todd Rubenstein. I'm the project manager here at the seat office that runs the company showcase program. And you probably have received emails from me up to this point. I am your point of contact in terms of anything related to biotech showcase. And I will serve as a liaison between you and the conference if there are any issues, along with scheduling with EIRs, as long as you are not with the National Institutes on Aging or the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute. They will cover a scheduling EIR time with you on their own. So as Chris said, you are getting an all access registration. You are going to Biotech Showcase and what that includes and on site one on one meetings and access to the partnering portal. Very important. You can attend in person company presentations, sessions and networking. And you also have access to the tabletop exhibition where you can walk around and learn about companies that are also in maybe your same space. If you are not registered, and I had asked each of you to contact me individually, and I believe every company has, you should email me immediately. I did the registration for almost every company. I believe, again, every company, you should have received a email back from Biotech Showcase confirming your registration. Again, if you have not yet received that, please email me immediately. 
You also received an email from me asking for your company logo, your company description, your social media tags, and your website. We use that for two things. One on the seed website, we uh, we show which companies went to which co which showcase events in our portfolio. So you can use that as a way to show and advertise how wonderful you are. We also develop social media content that we'll be promoting during the week of biotech showcase. So we'll be able to talk about your company being there, promote that through all of our social media avenues. Our preparation meetings start tomorrow for the seed supported companies and again NIA and NHLBI timelines vary they will be reaching out to those companies individually want to make a note that we do have some amazing resources on our website on the seed.nih.gov website and again this powerpoint will be sent to you all at the end uh, you have all access to all these links we have pitch deck templates we have elevator pitch templates we have articles that have been developed by our entrepreneurs and residents lots of wonderful resources so make sure you do take advantage of those by visiting our website Finally, Biotech Showcase does have a social media toolkit now that you are attending. So I put a link to that on this slide here, you in a kind of an image that would go to your LinkedIn, showing people that you will be attending Biotech Showcase to advertise on your own social media to start showing people and making uh, connections that way. So lots to give you, lots of resources. And again, we're gonna get into the meat and bones now, and I'm gonna turn this over to Luis and Ethel and uh, we will proceed from there. Thank you, thank you so much, Todd. Uh, so Luis and I are going to tag team it. You're going to hear from me first, followed by Luis. And um, for those of you who have never been at JP Morgan week, which is really what it's turned into, there's pre-events and there's post-events. I mean, it is a week at least. Uh, I did wanna preface it with just some comments. Uh, I will admit that I haven't been back since COVID. So um, things may have changed, but in general, it is a pretty crazy week uh, with a lot of things going on. It's one of only many concurrent meetings that are going on. Uh, I know Tuesday all day is Resi. A bio has opened up, opened up its partner partnering portal uh, so that you could do things through bio. Uh, the state bios, your, your regional bios are going to be having events. Everything's happening within just a few block radius between Union Square and downtown. There are also going to be special interest meetings like I know Women in Bio always does something. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank, which, you know, was notorious last year, uh, is back on track and they're going to be doing an annual review. So there's a lot of things happening concurrently and you may start getting invited after you, your registration for Biotech Showcase. Mm -hmm. I don't know how these, you know, uh, lists get uh, sent out, but you may start getting invited to various things. If you have any questions, like, is it worth going to this reception or that reception? Louise and I are veterans. I've been doing this for I don't know, probably 12 years now, almost since the beginning of JP Morgan week. Uh, so, you know, we all have opinions. Um, the way it works with pharma and venture capitalists, many of them, if not most of pharma's, will have suites in hotel rooms. So it might sound weird to be asked to go to a hotel room to have a business development meeting with pharma, but they take the beds out and maybe yeah, the night beds are yeah they take the beds out so if, if there's like, a bed it is weird get out if there's yeah, tables yeah. it's not weird <laughs> they, they i mean the headboards i think are bolted on the nightstand <laughs> might be bolted on it's still a hotel bathroom and then they basically where the beds are they put this round table you know with three or four people around the table so it might you might feel like this is not safe you know for a woman or whatever to go alone but believe it or not they are hotel rooms. Sometimes it's hotel suites. Uh, so it, it may be not so awkward because when you walk in, it looks more like a conference room or a dining room rather than a bedroom, but many of them will be in hotel bedrooms. Um, they generally are in the hotels around Union Square. So if you're taking the BART, if you're staying like I am far away, you know, half an hour away and you're taking the BART, it's Powell Station. Um, and um, the, the, uh, I would say that one of the key learnings that I have is that you cannot book back to back to back meetings like every half hour on the half hour unless you are actually at the biotech showcase venue in the Hilton 
where I'm going to describe in a second, where you're going to be able to move between little curtained off, you know, office space or little curtained off kiosks. Otherwise, there's such a crowd, there's small sidewalks, you're going to have to go up escalators, down escalators, elevators, finding the right room and the right, you know, corridor and the right building of whichever hotel, you got to give yourself like at least half an hour in between meetings. Um, we want you to proactively reach out to get invited to receptions, to all sorts of networking events. Just realize that for some pharmas, like I know J&J &J this year has gotten really selective. It's invite only to their business development list. So unless you're already doing business with them, I don't know if you can get invites to some of these places. Having said that, it's not going to be, you know, just to realize it's not weird walking into a hotel room with these strangers. Um, you should still be conscious of personal safety. Stuff has been happening around San Francisco. And even though this is sort of party time for the healthcare investment community, just be conscious. You know, San Francisco, you know, the downtown has pretty much emptied out. The financial district is undergoing a big transition. I don't really know what's happening there. A lot of the shops and stores and, and you know, Nordstrom's and Bloomingdale's and Saks with that, you know, some of them are closing down. There could be a lot of empty spaces. The homelessness is a big issue. So just be aware of your personal safety. It's winter by six o'clock, five, six o'clock, things are dark. So just be conscious of your personal safety. As I mentioned, pace yourself, make sure you have enough time in between all your meetings. And if you're like me and sometimes forget or think that, you know, I'm a 30 year old chickie and I can wear my heels on these cobblestone streets, wear comfortable shoes. Uh, you're going to be on your feet moving around between hotels and venues and restaurants and cafes and Girardelli's and, you know, all these places where you have your meetings. And it's a lot of walking at the end of the day. Your feet need a good soak. And for some of us, the end of the day is not till 10 or 11 o'clock. So wear comfortable shoes. Next. OK, so there are tons of events, as I mentioned, and lots of resources besides for Biotech Showcase, where you're getting access to the partnering portal. Bio has opened up their partnering portal and you could sign up for it for free. Um, they do this at other conferences as well. I think it's really great. Uh, maybe there are companies who are only on, who are mainly booking through bio and not through biotech showcase because they're not registering. So definitely use it. If it's really available, it's open to you. Definitely use it. Um, there's uh, another really great um, app or a guide to JPM with a comprehensive guide for all the different pitch events, all the different receptions at JPM conference. It's called the Nova Tour Ventures Bio Guide to JPM. Um, they, if you're seeking invitations, you know, for two and three weeks after registration have gone by and nobody's invited you to women in bio or nobody's invited you to things, you can go um, into there and see what in, what events you can sign up for or request invitations for. And they do have an Apple app uh, as well to keep track of things on your phone. Uh, also, a, a big CRO, CSSI, have been really a, a wonderful partner. They've made their partnering forum available for anybody to sign up and use their partnering space. It's right at the Hilton, so it's very central to where biotech showcase is happening. So if you are setting up a meeting with an investor, not through biotech showcase where you're getting assigned a kiosk but or a meeting space, but you have to figure out a place to meet separately, as an alternative to coffee shops, you know, if you say, OK, I'll meet you at Girardelli at one o'clock, but there are no tables there, you're you're standing and having your meeting in the corner, you know, or you're wasting half your time standing in line for a coffee so that you could actually meet at Girardelli instead of uh, a meeting space. So it's it's central. Nobody should have a problem just going downstairs uh, into the Hilton to go to the CSSI partnering forum. It's free registration. They also have an, an app. And one nice thing that they did this year, there's a block of hotel rooms far away. It's in Larkspur, but it is a Marriott. So it's a prime property. And uh, if you don't want to be spending $850 a night, it is an alternative. Uh, so there is, we provided a link and you're going to get these slides. So you'll have all the links. Definitely check with your regional bio, you know, you know, AZ bio or mass bio or wherever it is that you're from, because they're having their own receptions. They're having their own events. And the point is to pull lots of people together so that collisions between molecules can happen and you can make unexpected and hopefully wonderful connections with people that otherwise are not registering for biotech showcase or on the bio portal or the CSSI portal. 
can we have the next slide? And again, if you have questions, just let us know. Um, so this is a this is an, a real premier investment conference that is, you know, really for companies to showcase, you know, who they are and what they are doing and to have as many meetings as they possibly can. So who attends it? I wish I could just say, well, it's just the biotechs and pharma and the VCs, but it isn't. It's pretty much everybody. So yes, you will have VCs who register. They will definitely almost Every premier VC will at least have an associate, if not a senior associate, maybe not the partners, but at least associates signed up for Biotech Showcase try to snag their time. Um, corporate venture capital will almost always certainly have somebody there, maybe not for every therapeutic area, but again, you just need a lead or a conduit to where you eventually want to go. Uh, your company obviously is registered and all companies like you, biotechs from all around the world will be going there. But also remember that there will be vendors there and investment banks. And can you click on that one more time for a word about, oh no, isn't there a, a word about brokers and dealers? Okay, I thought that I had a fly in there. Not on this one. <laughs> um, all right, well, I do wanna say a, a word about brokers and dealers because everybody knows that you're coming to this event because you're trying to raise money. And so you will probably be descended upon by a flock of broker dealers, some of whom are legit broker dealers and some of whom are not legit broker dealers who are going to want you to who are going to want to help you with your raise. Like we can raise $20 million for you for a, you know, a measly 7% 7, 7 or 9% or 11% of your raise. By the way, the standard today is around 6 to 7%. Um, and you really have to think carefully. Uh, we can talk separately about, you know, what what who bona fide broker dealers are. But in general, if they do not, if they are not registered, SEC registered broker dealers, they're consultants who are masquerading as a broker dealer. And technically they're not, it's illegal for them to get a success fee. Um, they do have to work for an hourly or a milestone payment or like, you know, by, you know, certain things that they'll do for you. You know, I'll open the doors to 10 VCs and you'll pay me, you know, $500 or $5,000 for each one that leads to whatever, a term sheet or, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, really think carefully uh, before you sign up with a broker dealer. Enough said. We could talk about it separately when we meet, um, you know, if we meet to review your pitch. OK, go on to the next one. Uh, there's going to be, if you look at the Biotech Showcase website, you're going to see that there's all these events, uh, all these sorry presentations. There's already a full schedule of all the different presentations, the panel discussions about raising capital and the current trends and, you know, special interests like women's health. You know, there's so much to do. When am I ever going to have time to meet with investors? Your number one goal is is to meet with investors and pharma people. You know, if you're raising money, which is why we're sending you, we, we assumed you're all raising money or doing partnering deals, you know, that's who we really want you to meet with. But it's also an opportunity for you to scope your competition from around the world. So if you are developing some novel therapeutic for Alzheimer's disease and there's six other Alzheimer's disease companies who are presenting at Biotech Showcase or who are there, look them up in the partnering portal, go in and sit in on their 15 or 20 minutes of presentation that they've actually, you know, paid $6,000 for and see who's in the room and see who's following them and what stage they're at. I mean, it is public in the sense that if you've paid your registration, you get a chance to sit in on their presentation. So why not? So it's also an opportunity for you to scope out the competition. Um, it, uh, there is an opportunity to meet different suppliers or partners or vendors who may be of interest. In past years, right in, in, the, in the front of the room where we come in for the partnering, at least on the therapeutic side, right, for the biotech side, because there's also going to be a couple other ones, which I'll discuss in a second. There is Australia always has their pavilion. It is a site where we very often do phase one clinical trials. What you don't need an IND for. You need all the information of an IND, but really all you need is an ethics board approval. So Australia is a very hot place for biotechs to do their phase one trials. So they have a nice pavilion and you should at least learn about what they have to offer. So some of these vendors are definitely worth stopping by. There'll be CROs, there'll be biostatistics, there'll be GMP manufacturers, there'll be CDMOs. So some of them may be worth your while 
uh, stopping by and at least making a, a you know, having a name, a card, a connection uh, if you ever have to do due diligence or are actually looking for quotes. Next one. OK, so here's sort of the format. As I mentioned, if you go on their website for Biotech Showcase, there's already lots of content presentations and panel discussions. I put the link right there to the agenda. There's going to be lots of food, particularly in the hall um, that has the 100 curtain cubicles or the little kiosk. I don't even know what to call them. I'll, I'll describe it to you in a second. Um, you know, every two hours they come out with snacks and coffee and, you know, avail yourself. You don't even need to go out for lunch. Technically, they'll have lunch there. Uh, it goes very quickly, but they do have food there. They're going to be I, I said a dozen breakout rooms. I think last time I was there, there were probably three dozen breakout rooms with concurrent presentations from all the companies who have paid the thousands of dollars to present. So it's, you know, I, I said it's a lot of walking and, and some of them are, are pretty localized. Others are like in a totally different wing of the Hilton. So there is some walking in between. Um, in the actual partnering hall, it is a huge ballroom where they've used these curtains, like they curtain off these little kiosks, or they've curtained off these little cubicles where there's a table and anywhere from like three to four chairs. So it's pretty tight. Uh, it's a little cozy in there. Uh, don't come with big bags and, you know, you, there's always space if you have your carry-on or your luggage, there's space to, to store it in their, you know, in their coat check or in their luggage check. So really just plan on having your laptop or your iPad or whatever you know you have uh, to present your your what what it is you're going to talk about to present your pitch to investors. Um, it a lot of a lot of discussions are happening simultaneously. It is very possible that you will be automatically assigned from the partnering portal one of these little curtained you know partitioned kiosks that is smack in the center surrounded by six or eight other ones where conversations are happening at the same time uh, it could be a little disconcerting so and but it's a snug area if you have a very soft voice you might want to practice you know, your elocution a little bit better because this is not a time to be talking very softly and gently if there's 12 people talking all around you. So it's a little disconcerting. I just want to, to, you know, set the stage for what it can be like unless you somehow luck out to be in the corner where you don't have people all around you. Um, as I mentioned, there will be vendor booths. Uh, the, around the vendor booths, there are open tables. I want to say somewhere about eight tables that can each hold you know 10 or so chairs around it they just sort of leave them open so that you could grab your lunch have a snack there you know sit down i've actually met some of the most interesting companies and investors just at that open seating while i was waiting the half hour or hour in between meetings at biotech showcase so talk to someone who plops down next to you you just don't know where that conversation will go and of course, there is going to be a big networking reception uh, there as well that is definitely worth staying for. But it, it is overwhelming. There will be hundreds of people. Can you just click the fly-ins? What they started doing a few years ago was adding other places beyond Biotech Showcase, which focuses on therapeutics and on drug discovery, to do digital health. They call it digital medicine and also med tech. And I know some of you fall into that um, as well as seed stage. So make sure you're aware of which venue you want to spend time at and where these different things are. I remember it one year, MedTech was not even at the Hilton. We had to walk like six blocks in a totally different direction to get to the MedTech part of Biotech Showcase. And like I said, those dozen or two dozen or three dozen breakout rooms with the pitches, that's an opportunity to scope out your competition or to learn learn who's doing what. Next slide. So I'm transitioning to you now. Correct. So your goal uh, at this meeting is to get as many one on ones with appropriate investors, and that really does put the burden primarily on you as the entrepreneur to um, figure out who is, is, is more likely to be interested in my technology. Uh, the partnering portal opens, is it today? Is it this week? I can't remember, it's coming up uh, quickly. 
Um, do log in. Upload it's the 21st page. of November. Oh, OK, so it's later than I thought. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, I'm thank surprised. you. Yeah. Um, I think it might be the bio one that's opening today. So there are the and I do um, would like to reiterate the earlier point Ethel made uh, that registering for the bio portal as well as the um, biotech showcase portal. I think they are using two different platforms. One's partnering one. The other one is the bio proprietary portal. Um, it is worth the time. First of all, if you have your material in a Word document, you can cut and paste into the various ones. Uh, the bio one gets used at meetings throughout the year. I literally earlier this week, I was at a Maryland Life Sciences event and they were using the bio portal. And so once you put in your email address, it just asks you to confirm everything you've entered before, make whatever edits, and it's all there and housed, which is really nice because you will you'll, you'll be doing this again and again and again. So upload your, your uh, uh, up to date pitch deck publications, any uh, uh, relevant material that you want uh, folks to have access to as they scan that invitation from you. And this is something Ethel and I can help you with of what's that punchy introduction of I'm so and so from so and so biotech and I'd like to meet at the biotech showcase that opening kind of two sentence that you can literally read on, on, on phone and make that decision of do I research it for their, their first decision is either no or do I research it further? And then if it's a refer, research it further, then they go into your deadline and then they'll decide yes or no. So um, uh, definitely doing the the you know understanding what kind of raise you're doing, what kind of uh, raise, what kind of uh, fundraising do they support? How early a stage? How big is their check size? what therapeutic categories, product types, et cetera, they're most likely to invest in is best to do uh, as much as possible. And uh, as it is noted, it's reach out early, but in a concise manner. You really need that hook of why you're worth meeting with. Next slide, please, Todd. And then customize. Yes, you're going to have in some Word document your base pitch about who you are, but wherever possible, you can, if you can tie to either one of their current portfolio companies, a place where one of their partners has worked or invested, some kind of a tie that, oh, okay, these guys are somehow have that kind of Kevin Bacon one degree of separation from me, the better your, your chances of them accepting a meeting. So the customizing the cover meeting, the, 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 the invitation request is very important, has to be concise and reaching out early. Uh, I think I think the rule of three is one reach out and two follow ups um, before you're just sort of a you're facing diminishing returns or and B you're just becoming a past and you, then you engender a bad memory in the future. Um, but before you even issue your invitations, make sure your profile and everything is up to date first. Uh, and one part of, of your profile is also blocking times where there are sessions you want to see or other meetings you're going to attend. And that is one of the challenges of having multiple meeting portals and calendars is that if you're using the bio portal and the um, the Demi Colton portal, for example, let's say it's just two, if you get an acceptance on one, you then want to block the time on the other, et cetera, because a lot of these portals are set up where you simply ask, the other party accepts, and, and the app then says to this little curtained room uh, Ethel was describing, uh, go to curtained room number 47 at 3.45 p.m. It matches your schedules and assigns you a time and a place. You don't pick one yourself um, in many cases. Um, and then, you know, other ways of connecting with people, LinkedIn, in mails, the you're going to be in San Francisco. If it's a person who funds uh, biomedical innovation, chances are they're going to be in town. Then the issue is what day, what place and um, are you available to meet? Uh, the Monday meetings are the hardest to get because that's sort of when things kick off, depending on how long you're willing to endure and stay. Calendars do open up later in the week, but also people start departing on Wednesday and Thursday uh, in many cases. Um, and then updating your social media and website to make sure that people know you're going to be there. Very important. 
OK, I'll create a short, a compelling narrative. Um, Ethel, myself and our colleagues uh, in the seat office are available to review and, you know, put on that. Of, is this compelling? Would I take this meeting uh, and how could I improve it? Uh, so we're happy to do that. We do uh, encourage that for your one on one meetings, be they at Biotech Showcase or in one of the other venues, say you're running downstairs. I, actually, I think it's upstairs to the CSSI suite, which is nice to have in the hotel for the very important reason. There may be people you want to meet with who want to meet with you who haven't paid the four digit fee to get a badge for Biotech Showcase. That's right. what's nice about having a place to meet with them at the CSSI where they let uh, any authorized guest in and you're not paying separately to sit in a lobby or in a coffee shop. Any case, some supporting materials, but the most you can expect is a 30 minute meeting and sometimes you don't even get 30. So 10 to 12 slides where your objective is to speak for less than a third of the time you have. Always let them ask questions. When you're speaking, you're assuming you know what they're interested in. And yes, there's some level of, 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 of um, communication that is didactic, but it's far more effective to be answering questions that they have than it is to be lecturing at people. And um, the branding, the what do they remember about you and your company in that one sentence, oh yeah, those are the guys that blank. Those are the people that are developing X make that really, really succinct and clear, much like uh, these consumer products have you know, gotten that catchy hook. Also, very much an investor focus. This is not a scientific meeting. It's actually the polar opposite of a scientific meeting. The science is necessary. It is also, to some extent, assumed. They'll, they'll delve into the science and diligence if they're interested, but they're only ever going to get to discussing your science if they're interested in the business story of, OK, you're you're asking them for one million dollars and you've got a plan to make it worth 50 or 100 million dollars and those are the, the kind of venture multiples that they don't always happen but that should at least be kind of in the in in the realm of of uh, realistic um the uh and why invest in your company uh things like how long will it take before you're generating cash flow, how long will it take? Will there uh, to there being an exit of some sort via an exit to a strategic, an IPO, et cetera? Very much an investor focus. Next slide. I just wanted to add one thing that yeah, don't be insulted. If you've pre-sent materials or if you filled out your whole, you know, profile and you meet with an investor, you still have to expect to spend a few minutes giving them an update or explaining who you are and why you're meeting with them because nobody we, we meet dozens of companies a day nobody's going to remember anything so that that's the tagline if you do have something that's real snappy and memorable will, will actually help you oh remember we're the quicker picker upper company and uh, the 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 homework could be there'll be homework at both ends there's going to be homework in november and december there's going to be homework later in january as well to on the front end, it's curating the list of investors you want to invest in, who you want to meet with, to uh, seek their investment. Reach out also to their uh, business development contacts at the at the strategic companies who could be either uh, research partners or potential acquirers for your company at the at, at some point, and start scheduling early, recognizing that from their perspective, they're going to fill up their schedule with the meetings that are their highest priority. And then over time, as we're getting closer to January, then they fill in around. So there's this odd game of when do you commit? And generally, they're going to do bigger and later stage companies earlier, smaller and more, you know, deals for the future later. And one of the big objectives of, of, of being at JP Morgan is also socializing a deal or a raise that may not happen for another six months or a year. Uh, so that, you know, you're, they're, no one's going to make an investment at a first meeting um, They're but they're going to fill their, they're going to start filling their dance card with people who they're either in diligence or starting diligence and then work backward to fill out the, uh, the schedule as approach. So there is a big flurry, uh, even post New Year's Day 
of filling in the schedule. And that's where I think for many of you, you'll be most active, even if you've started the process of invitations in um, you know, November 21st, uh, as it says here. Next slide. The last one is wrong. Oh, yes. There are uh, three very useful seed articles that uh, I would urge you to read uh, when you receive the slides in um, from, from Todd in a follow-up email. You can control and click on any of these, or you can also Google, you know, do it the hard way through Google into the um, uh, seed website on, um, you know, just how-to articles on how to successfully seed invest, uh, seek uh, investment in your companies. And as Todd mentioned earlier, I think each of you is being offered a time with some of the CDIRs to help you prepare, or get a critical look at the slide deck, get a critical look at your invitation materials, critical look at your um, at what you're posting on the various partnering functions. The more prep you have done in advance of those, the more we're reacting to something you've developed rather than just essentially rehashing this uh, general um, level discussion that we're having today. I think uh, is that the last slide, Todd? Yeah. Yes, it is. I do want to add biotech showcase in past years on their website actually had tips and tricks for getting those meetings. Realistically speaking, if you can get a third of your invitations accepted, you're a winner. But oh, they my, might not yeah. tell you that. Yeah, they might not tell you that. I'm telling you that. Like, yeah. don't, you know, don't be offended if half your invitations go unanswered or rejected or whatever. But a third is probably what you should shoot for. And they've had tips and tricks on how to get meetings, how to you know, uh, put, you know, what kind of, you know, don't just say meeting requests, like that's in the title, you, you know, ways to really pull in people. Right. Clin clinical stage oncology, oncology asset or clinic, you know, very kind of, aha, this is the, uh, you know, talking about stage, therapeutic area, technology type, get yourself sorted real fast. And I, and I would say, look, even at 10 or 15% acceptance rate, if they're the right acceptances, Totally worth the week. Totally worth it. Great. Questions? Thank you, Ethel and Luis. And before uh, we open the question, just a reminder, you all are meeting with one of your entrepreneurs and residents. It might not be Ethel or Luis, but that's all right. We have seven within the seed office. And as I said, NIA and NHLBI have their own. All are wonderful. All have great experience and can help you develop your materials and you know, I, I do send a reminder email out three days prior to your meeting to send us those ancillary materials. Please be sure to do so, because as Louis said, you know, if they have something to look at ahead of time, that first meeting is going to be a lot more impactful. We're going to be able to actually talk about what you have as opposed to just going over it on the spot. Also, keep in mind that our EIR cons our meetings are usually iterative, so you might have two meetings. You might have three meetings, so don't expect to get everything done in the first, and that will be perfectly fine. Yeah. So we will open up to questions. We can either have you type them in the chat is fine, or if you are feeling brave and would like to unmute and even possibly come on camera, you are more than welcome to do it that way as well. Any questions you have? We have almost 20 minutes, and as Chris would say, we're happy to give time back, but we are very happy to answer questions. Just come off mute. We're all friends here. We're going to get to know you anyway. <laughs> I don't know. Are we really friends? <laughs> Absolutely. This is a prime opportunity. Chances are whatever questions at the top of your head right now is also on the minds of all of your colleagues on this call. So if you're the brave one who raises your hand and asks a question, like then this. we're off and running. And if no one. Oh, good. Thank good. you, Dr. Goldberg. Familiar person. <laughs> Hi, um, I was going to ask uh, about the virtual part of the meeting. Uh, you mentioned here that um, we are looking at the website and it talks about three days of uh, in person and then a couple of days of virtual. Are we covered? Is this um, uh, what we have uh, part includes both of them? Or Absolutely. do we have to for virtual to get separate? No, it, it includes both. Uh, the virtual opportunities are just additional opportunities for uh, for meetings to take place that couldn't occur in the first three days in person. But yes, you do have access to the virtual meetings as well. OK, that, I think that would be great because other than, for example, myself, maybe somebody else in my team here in Massachusetts can uh, join some of the virtuals. 
Yes. Absolutely. You can also use that virtual time to follow up if you just bump into someone in San Francisco, have a coffee with them, but they don't have time on their calendar. They may have time in those following days if for whatever oh. reason they're not willing to set up just a regular video conference with you. OK, that's a great idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Other questions? Brad. Brad's hand is raised. Go ahead, Brad. Hi, Ethel. Hi, Todd and everyone. Hi. So quick question, uh, two quick questions. One, I'm having trouble finding the bio um, specific partnering website, how I can re get registered for that. If there's any way you guys could send that back out, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, and, and then the other component is um, one of the, the stage that my company's at is we're really looking to make, um, to, to do networking for distribution type of partnerships. Uh, is this, uh, think, do you think this is a good opportunity to provoke, pro, uh, uh, um, approach. Uh, I don't want to call them competitors, but potential uh, partners for distribution and things like that. So like the big ones will be there. Boston Scientific will be there. Uh, Medtronic will be there. I mean, I used to go back in my corporate days. The big companies will be there. Strike will be there. They, they won't be registered at Biotech Showcase because that has, even though they're having like a med tech, I doubt they'll be registered at Biotech Showcase, but they definitely have one of those, you know, funky hotel rooms. So I, that's what I mean. Besides for going through Biotech Showcase, you should be reaching out to the Henry Shines or whoever of the world to say, hey, are you going to be at JP Morgan? Did you get a suite? No, we can get assigned a space by CSSI or we can get assigned a space by bio or, you know, whatever it is and um, use that space to meet with them. So reach out to them separately. That's what, you know, curate who you want to meet with. You want to meet with distributors? Make a list of six, reach out to their business development folks. Are you guys going to be in San Francisco that week? Can we meet? Great, thank you. All right, other questions? We had a similar call yesterday focused mm -hmm. on the Redefining Early Stage Investments or RESI conference. They went long. I'm out. just saying, if any of you are feeling competitive. <laughs> well, I have a hard stop at two, but, uh, you know, the, I, I try to always prepare like how overwhelming it is. By the way, the other thing to note is you're not really going to be at the J.P. Morgan conference. The actual J.P. Morgan healthcare conference is for ec Wall Street equity analysts and all the research houses and all the the public Wall Street investors to be meeting with public companies at the Francis Drake Hotel. So that's invite only to the Wall Street people. So we call it JP Morgan because all the stuff happens in the private world around it, but we're not actually at that JP Morgan Healthcare Conference. It's the Western St. Francis, but yes. The we, oh, sorry, the Western St. Francis. But and but everybody calls the whole thing JP Morgan, even though less than a Fifth of the people in town are actually going to that meeting, <laughs> and and half the flights going out to to San Francisco on Sunday morning will be JP Morgan people mm -hmm. attending JP Morgan Week. Yeah, like I, I fly out of EWI. Yeah, if you haven't that's, booked your travel yet, do it. The the seats are hard to come by. Don't be shy on the plane or while you're waiting. Oh, Talk absolutely. to the people next to you. Right. Your odds yeah. are pretty this, good. The minute you leave your house, that's when your outreach starts. Wow. Yeah. Dr. Goldberg, you keep raising and lowering and raising and lowering. Is there another question? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to lower. I don't know why it kept saying it's your lowered. Um, <laughs> not sure if I moved my mouse or not. That that the might words. be why. Um, you know, we try to um, reserve hotel rooms. And we are having almost no luck unless you want to pay a thousand dollars per night. Okay. And we, we oh, are only one thousand. Yeah, the, they, they go higher than that. Yeah, oh, I know that's the lowest we could find. Then they are two thousand. Right. Do you guys have any room reserved like under NIH that we can pay for? But it would be like a, you know, like a wedding party kind of. A no, thing. but I'll tell you our, our dirty little secrets. So 
There is the Marriott Oakland City Center, which is usually 450 or less a night, depending on the night. Uh, it's right across the street from the BART station, so it you know it's relatively safe. You're not going to be walking three blocks in Oakland at night. It's right across the street from the entrance to the BART station, so you will have to budget an extra half an hour or 20 minutes or so to get down to Union Square, but it is much, much cheaper than staying in San Francisco. Uh, I'm staying at a residence in in Berkeley, which is again right across the street from a BART station, so I'll have to budget the time. Uh, and there is another group called Bullpen that has reserved, I don't know if it's up till today, but they've gotten a couple of uh, hotels at the Marina District for like $360 a night or something like that. Uh, you would have to probably join the Bullpen. The guy to speak to there is a guy named Christian Engstrom from Evia Bio. I'll drop his name into the chat. You could join okay. Bullpen. I know he's always Ooh. looking for... Christian, I think this is how you spell his name. He's put together the social group of CXOs from biotech and medtech. Uh, and this is something new he's doing. Um, what else? But that's the Marina District. So that's like I've got a lot. two you additional suggestions. Um, one, the CSSI folks uh, are do have a block. I don't know how full it is of rooms at the Marriott Larkspur, which is very far away. But the reason they do it there is it's a less than five minute walk to the ferry station. The ferry then takes you to San Francisco, which is then a 10 block walk from Union, uh, 10 block walk from Union Square. So the reason they're so far away is because there is a direct connection. It is not run as frequently as the BART. And it is, you know, so it's and there's the whole if the weather's rough, right. you know, you don't get seasick on the BART. <laughs> San Francisco Bay can rock and roll a little bit in the in the winter time, but that's a thought, and that's like two hundred and nine dollars a night. Second subject. Oh wow! Um, okay, we can yeah, we can afford that one. <laughs> yeah, that one is, you know, it's definitely very affordable, but it is much further away, and you're not going to be able to run to your room during the day. It's just too far away for that. Right, of course. Um, the other thing I know a lot of startups do, and frankly, even a lot of investors do, is they get together with a group and do an Airbnb. Um, right. The uh, I, I'm with a group that's doing a four bedroom, four bath Airbnb, and we're just doing it that way. And, uh, you know, so literally some people leave their homes <laughs> this week in San Francisco because they can make more money renting it out. <laughs> make the mortgage payment in one okay. week. <laughs> so, you know. Well, if anybody on this call wants to look into it with us, um, that's an idea. Open to that. If anybody on this call that. is going to, um, as you know, that they come available and get booked on a daily basis between, you know, so that's a very fluid marketplace of supply and demand. And as the prices go up more, you know, but right. that's some people that's become more popular in, in recent years because the hotels have just gotten so crazy. I mean, and, right. and I, so, I will, one last point I'll make there are some hotels in that area where the price may seem attractive, be careful. There are some yeah. real bad hotels. Well, I want to say More the financial is from that <laughs> abuts the tenderloin, right? You have to be a yeah. little careful. Like we, some of those hotels really abut the tenderloin. You should not be walking alone at night there. Like, yeah. You know, you don't... <laughs> Don't come home. That's with the TV. place they send the government people because that fits within the government rate. Right. If you get a room for seventy dollars a night, it's that kind of hotel. So no. So no, I mean, uh, before I think right before COVID, I um, was able to get a room that was the cheapest room I could find for six hundred dollars a night, and I couldn't walk. I was terrified to walk to uh, yeah. the convention center. And we kept complaining about, I hate to say it, about the homeless right underneath when they start partying at midnight and we yeah. couldn't even sleep. So it was really, really tough. And it was a high price, at least to us, $600. No, a 600 is... And as a woman, I couldn't walk alone. I had to find yeah. other people to walk Which with. Which is me. why some people yeah. go to Oakland or Emeryville right. or Larkspur or in the other direction to Daly City, although there aren't a lot of hotels near that station. Or the, or the airport. Or the or airport, airport station. And you Uber it in, but you're going, you're going to be Ubering it in for $80. Like, for me, if yeah. I can't stay within walking distance, 
of Union Square, if I can't stay there, I'd rather just be across the street from a BART and have to wake up at six in the morning. Like, you know, so for me, a BART is like better than, than right. uh, uh, you know, and you really do have to care about your safety, um, yes. you know. And the Powell Street oh, okay. station is yeah, a lot closer than the ferry station. And and Anna, who lives in the Bay Area, says you could take the BART or the Caltrain from the airport straight in. That's right. So yeah. they also look at the airport. OK, so and BART is safe to get on it? Yeah, I would say till eight. If you want to take the subway in New York, you can take the BART in San Francisco. Yeah. OK, I take subway in I Boston. I think that I would do it at midnight. <laughs> I mean, I would say that after eight o'clock, for me personally, after eight or nine o'clock at night, I'm taking an Uber. Yes, like, yes, I agree. Right. I agree. And make sure you are looking at the chat. I already see one person indicated they'd be in interested in doing an Airbnb. So make oh, sure you. I wasn't looking at the chat. Thank you so much. Let me open it so I can see it. Yeah, the three or four bedroom places, if they've got ensuite bathrooms, those that gets you to a, a per room rate that you can't touch at a hotel. No, I, I got I, I think I got 360 a night at at the residence in in Berkeley and I think it's 450 at the Oakland Marriott City Center. OK, all right, I'll, I'll look into those. I yeah, we were looking in San Francisco area where I know you can. Yeah. Right. Oh, all right. Thank Everyone, you. That was very I'll, I'll be honest, so many of those hotels sold out the third week in January of this year. Like people will book for the following year, the next week. Yeah, that's what they've been sold out like. for a year. I yeah. have done wow. that also in the past. Yeah. Wow. Oh. So they're right. long gone. And I am seeing some comments and questions. Um, the bio portal, it does. And I look myself. It does look like there is a fee for using it, maybe starting this year as a first. Um, I'm not sure if it's the same one you all referring to. But when we, I Googled it and I know Brad saw it and uh, Julia saw it as well, that it seems to be a fee associated with using it at JPM. Oh, then, then, yeah, I don't know that I would, then I w don't know that you, I don't know, I wouldn't pay. I would reach out to Pharma independently. You need to know by now who you want to get into partnering or investment discussions with and reach out to them independently. The only thing is if you don't have a warm intro, you know, it's it's hard. Like you really do need a warm intro to whoever you want to meet with. Like at least the bio partnering portal, everybody like will everybody understands that it's a cold outreach. Yeah. One of the things that I encourage you to do when you get the deck from uh, from us either tomorrow or the next day. Uh, today is. Wednesday, yeah. so yes, Thursday or Friday. <laughs> it's it's a blur life since the pandemic started. Um, is those three links at the back of that deck of the deck that we shared earlier? Really talk about how to identify the right investors to reach out to, how to cull and develop that list, and how to develop warm introductions. And as well connected as my EIR team is. I do not encourage them to randomly provide warm introductions. They really, really know their investor networks, and I don't need to ask them to make introductions when they know there's a good fit, right? They will do that spontaneously because that is their network and you guys are our portfolio. So there may indeed be some cases where they can provide warm intros, but please do not rely on the um, NIH EIR network to be a full expansion of your network. Dr. Batar? Uh, can I clarify a couple of things? The Absolutely. meeting is January 9 to 11, correct? No, January, uh, 8th. January Monday, 9th to 11. Monday the 8th. The 8th yeah. Oh, Monday the 8th. So I have to fly in on Sunday. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. And you might want to really consider flying in Sunday morning because there may be some networking events that are worthwhile attending okay. Sunday evening. Yep. What is the meeting hotel? What's the main the, the main the Hilton, uh, Hilton, Hilton, Hilton Union Square? Yeah. Union Square? Yeah, it's in the, the cafeteria of Hilton. Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, I was just looking at hotels online while you were talking. <laughs> Everyone's now worried. <laughs> yeah, don't even think about the Hilton. That's probably fifteen hundred dollars a night. Like, no, I'm not going to stay there. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. All right, we do have about three minutes left. If there are any last minute questions, and again, keep in mind you will be meeting with your entrepreneurs and resident colleagues, so you can ask these questions then as well, and always email me as well as also. <laughs> So I will be there this year. Um, if we all wanted as a group to get together, let's say Wednesday night after at five o'clock last thing or 530 at Biotech Showcase, I'm happy to meet you at one of the round tables. We could take it over and just I hear from you what works, what didn't work, what your experience has been like. Did we prepare you sufficiently? Were you completely shocked? Uh, did you have good discussions? If you want, let me know uh, and uh, I will. I'll be happy to coordinate something that we all meet in one place on one day. Okay. I encourage you to take care, take advantage of that. Having a one on one conversation with Ethel can change your life in all sorts of wonderful, positive ways. <laughs> oh my ways. gosh. <laughs> now I, I feel intimidated. I, I don't know that I fully can agree live with up Chris's statement. That. Fully agree with Chris's statement. <laughs> okay, fully folks, we are at life. the top of the hour. Right. Thank you all Good very luck, much. Everybody. Thank you so much, Good Ethel, Luis, Todd, right. and everyone else. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Thank you all.